Welcome to Audiobook 365 Stories. In the cheapest room of a big apartment building, Stepan Klotchkov, a third-year medical student, was walking back and forth, studying hard for his anatomy test. His mouth was dry and his forehead was sweating from working so hard to memorize everything. In the window, which had frost patterns on it, sat the girl who shared his room, Annie Yuda. She was a thin, 25-year-old with brown hair and pale skin. She had mild gray eyes. Sitting with a bent back, she was busy sewing a man's shirt collar with red thread. She was working quickly. The clock in the hallway struck too slowly, but the room was still messy. There were crumpled bedclothes, pillows thrown around, books, clothes, and a dirty bucket filled with soapy water with cigarette butts in it. Everything looked very disorganized. The right lung has three parts, Klotchkov repeated. Boundaries. The top part on the front of the chest reaches the fourth or fifth rib on the side, the fourth rib, behind to the shoulder blade. Klotchkov looked up at the ceiling, trying to picture what he had just read. He couldn't see it clearly, so he began feeling his ribs through his vest. These ribs are like piano keys, he said. You need to get to know them so you don't get confused. You need to study them on both the skeleton and the living body. I say, Aniyuda, let me feel your ribs. Aniyuda put down her sewing, took off her blouse, and stood up. Klotchkov sat down facing her, frowned, and began counting her ribs. Hmm. I can't feel the first rib. It's behind the shoulder blade. This must be the second rib. Yes, this is the third. This is the fourth. Hmm. Yes. Why are you moving? Your fingers are cold. Come on, it won't hurt you. Don't move around. That must be the third rib. This is the fourth. You look so thin, and yet I can barely feel your ribs. That's the second. That's the third. Oh, this is confusing, and I can't see it clearly. I need to draw it. Where's my crayon? Klotchkov took his crayon and drew several lines on Anuta's chest to show where the ribs were. Great. That's clear now. Well, now I can examine you. Stand up. Aniuta stood up and raised her chin. Klotchkov began checking her and was so focused on this that he did not notice how Anuta's lips, nose, and fingers turned blue from the cold. Aniuta shivered and was worried that Klotchkov might stop his work if he noticed she was cold. She was afraid that he might fail his exam. Now it's all clear, Klotchkov said when he was finished. You stay like this and don't wipe off the crayon, and I will study a little more. The student began walking back and forth again, repeating his notes. Aniuta, with black lines across her chest, looking like she had been tattooed, sat thinking and shivering from the cold. She usually said very little. She was always quiet and thinking a lot. In the six or seven years she had moved from one rented room to another, she had known five students like Klotchkov. Now they had all finished their studies and moved on with their lives. They had forgotten her. One was living in Paris, two were doctors, one was an artist, and the fifth was said to be a professor. Klotchkov was the sixth. Soon he, too, would finish his studies and leave. He had a bright future ahead, and Klotchkov would likely become a great person. But right now, his situation was not good. He had no tobacco and no tea, and there were only four lumps of sugar left. She needed to hurry and finish her sewing, take it to the woman who ordered it, and with the money she got, 
by tea and tobacco. Can I come in? A voice asked at the door. Anyuta quickly put on a woolen shawl. Fedosov, the artist, walked in. I need a favor, he said to Klotchkov, looking serious with his long hair hanging over his forehead. Can you lend me your young lady for a couple of hours? I'm painting a picture and need a model. Sure, Klotchkov said. Go ahead, Anyuta. The things I have to deal with there, Anyuta said softly. Don't worry. He's asking you for art, not for anything silly. Why not help him if you can? Anyuta began getting dressed. And what are you painting? asked Klotchkov. Psyche, it's a nice subject, but it's not working well. I have to keep using different models. Yesterday, I was painting a girl with blue legs. Why are your legs blue? I asked her. My stockings stain them, she said. And you are still studying hard. Lucky you. You have patience. Medicine is a job that needs hard work. Hmm. Excuse me, Klotchkov, but you live like an animal. It's terrible the way you live. What do you mean? I can't help it. I only get 12 rubles a month from my father, and it's hard to live well on that. Yes, yes, said the artist, frowning with disgust. But still, you might live better. An educated man should have good taste, right? And look at this place. The bed is not made. There are dirty dishes and dirt everywhere. Yesterday's porridge is still on the plates. Yuck! That's true, said the student, feeling embarrassed. But Anyuta had no time to clean today. She has been busy all the time. When Anyuta and the artist had gone out, Klotchkov lay down on the sofa and began studying while lying down. Then he accidentally fell asleep. When he woke up an hour later, he propped his head on his fists and thought deeply. He remembered the artist's words that an educated man should have good taste. He looked around and saw his room was dirty and messy. He imagined his future, seeing his patients in his office and drinking tea in a big dining room with his wife, a real lady. And now that dirty bucket with cigarette ends looked very disgusting. He also thought about Anyuta, a plain, messy, sad figure, and decided to leave her at once, no matter what. When she came back from the artist's place, she took off her coat. He got up and said to her seriously, Look here, my good girl. Sit down and listen. We must part. The fact is, I don't want to live with you any longer. Anyuta was very tired and worn out from standing so long as a model. Her face looked thin and tired, and her chin sharper than ever. She didn't say anything to the student's words. Only her lips began to tremble. You know we would have to part sooner or later anyway, said the student. You're a nice, good girl and not a fool, you'll understand. Anyuta put on her coat again, quietly wrapped up her embroidery in paper, gathered her needles and thread. She found the paper with the four lumps of sugar in the window and put it on the table by the books. That's your sugar, she said softly and turned away to hide her tears. Why are you crying? asked Klotchkov. He walked around the room, feeling confused, and said, You are a strange girl, really. You know we have to part. We can't stay together forever. She gathered all her things and turned to say goodbye to him, and he felt sorry for her. Should I let her stay here another week? He thought. She might as well stay, and I'll tell her to go in a week. Angry at his own weakness, he shouted at her roughly. Come on, why are you standing there? If you're going, go, and if you don't want to, take off your coat and stay. You can stay. 
Aniuta took off her coat, silently and quietly, then blew her nose quietly, sighed, and quietly went back to her usual place on her stool by the window. The student took his textbook and began walking from corner to corner again. The right lung consists of three parts, he repeated. The upper part, on the front wall of the chest, reaches the fourth or fifth rib. In the passage, someone shouted loudly, Grigory, the samovar.